So, so let me read that yes. section. Manel's going to read from the new book, The City of Devi, or The City of Devi, and this is about the Super Devi yes, movie. Yes, right. Super Devi released that summer, deluging even non-movie people like us with its hype. The most expensive Indian film ever made, thanks to the backing of both Hollywood and the Indian Mafia. Lata M teams up for her techno comeback with Lady Gaga, who Uma said was a famous pop star. Their title duet rockets to the top of charts worldwide. And up in the sky, a bird, a jet, no, Super Devi herself, zooming overhead behind a prop plane as we sat and tried to ignore her on the beach at Chapati. Supposedly, the script borrowed extensively from Slumdog Millionaire and Superman, films which neither of us had seen, in telling the story of a young girl from the Mumbai slums with the power to assume different avatars of Devi to fight crime. Uma kept herding us to McDonald's, which was giving away all nine incarnations from the movie as collectible action figures throughout India and parts of England and New Jersey, free with food purchases, vegetarian only so as not to upset Hindu sentiments. She collected eight of the figures, turning off the light at home to show us how they glowed in the dark just like Super Devi. Despite foisting dozens of Makalu Tikki sandwiches on us, and I'll interrupt and say, McDonald's in India, go for the Makalu Tikki sandwiches. They're amazing. I never eat at McDonald's here, but those are really spicy. Vegetarian? Those, vegetarian, delicious. So despite foisting dozens of Makalu Tikki sandwiches on us, however, she never managed to acquire the elusive Kali incarnation, doting her AK-47 from the final battle scene. The movie managed to surpass even the most optimistic projections. I read breathless reports in magazines of kids dragging their families to see it three and four and even ten times, of the urban youth of India finding spiritual enlightenment in Super Devi's incarnation as call center worker to fight telefraud, of Desis in New York and London and Sydney bringing such gaggles of white friends to screenings that the film quickly spilled over to mainstream international release. A ZTV program documented how Super Devi wielded its greatest power over rural India, whose citizens experienced it not as movie, but as religious odyssey, calling the heroine Upar Devi, which translated to Upper Devi in several Indian languages. The reporter followed scores of villages, villagers making pilgrimages from miles around to get the Super Devi's blessing at a small theater in Nambala where both fire exits had been converted into Devi shrines for patrons to leave flowers, coconuts, and monetary offerings. Perhaps the most definitive evidence of the film's popularity appeared in the calendar art sold on city streets. All the goddesses from Lakshmi to Saraswati to Parvati bore striking resemblance to Super Devi's child heroine, Baby Rinky. Superman is uh, kind of like religion light. And I don't think people get that, that this is Jesus in a cape. Oh, I never got that. That's, that's very interesting. Of course, that he has all these powers. He can okay. go back in time. He uh -huh. can, you know. Right, uh, right. St. Peter says in the Bible, um, when Jesus asks him a question, Lord, you know everything mm -hmm. already. Right, right. And, and, and that makes me think, oh, that's right. Jesus knows everything. He's, mm -hmm. you know, eternal. Uh, so Superman to me and, and, and all these um, heroes, people need a hero.